They shall be apprehended by and by. The king hath note of all they intend. By interception they dream not of. <laughs> Now sits the wind fair, and we will aboard. <clears throat> my lord of Cambridge, my kind lord of Masham, and you, my gentle knight, give me your thoughts. Think you not that the powers we bear with us will cut their passage through the force of France? No doubt, my liege, if each man does his best. We doubt not that, since we are well persuaded we carry not a heart with us from hence that grows not in a fair consent with ours. Never was there a monarch better feared and loved than is your majesty. True, those that were your father's enemies have steeped their galls in honey and do serve you with hearts created of duty and zeal. Such service shall with steeled sinews toil, and labor shall refresh itself with love to do your grace incessant service. We judge no less. My uncle of Exeter, enlarge the man committed yesterday that railed against our person. We do believe it was excess of wine that set him on, and on his more advice, we pardon him. That's mercy, but too much security. Let him be punished, sovereign, lest example breathe through his sufferance more of such a kind. Oh, let us yet be merciful. So may your highness, and yet punish too. Sir, you show great mercy if you give him life after the taste of much correction. Alas, your too much love and care of me are heavy orisons against this poor wretch. If little faults proceeding on distemper shall not be winked at, how shall we stretch our eye when capital crimes, chewed, swallowed, and digested, appear before us? <laughs> we'll yet enlarge that man, though Cambridge, Scroop, and Gray, and their dear and tender preservation of our person, would have him punished. And now to our French causes. Who are the late commissioners? Uh, I won, my lord. Your highness bade me ask for it today. So did you mean, my liege. And I, my royal sovereign. Then Richard, Earl of Cambridge, there's yours. There's yours, Lord Scroop of Masham. And Sir Knight Grey of Northumberland, the same is yours. Read them, and know I know your worthiness. Well, how now? <laughs> Gentlemen, what see you in those papers that you lose so much complexion? I do confess my fault and do submit myself to your highness's mercy. To, to which, which we all appeal. appeal. The mercy that was quick in us but late by your own counsel, is suppressed and killed. You must not dare for shame to talk of mercy. See you, my princes and my peers, these English monsters. My lord of Cambridge here hath for a few light crowns lightly conspired to kill us here in Hampton, to the which this knight, no less for bounty bound to us than Cambridge is, hath likewise sworn. But oh, what shall I say to thee, Lord Scroop, thou cruel, ungrateful, savage, and inhuman creature, thou that didst bear the key of all my counsels, that knewest the very bottom of my soul? Tis so strange that though the truth of it stands off as gross as black and white, my eye will scarcely see it. Show men dutiful, as so didst thou. Come they of noble family, as so didst thou. Seem they grave and learned, why so didst thou? Seem they religious, why so didst thou? Such and so finely bolted didst thou seem. And thus thy fall hath left a kind of blot to mark the full fraught man and best endued with some suspicion. I will weep for thee, but this revolt of thine methinks is like another fall of man. Their faults are open, arrest them to the letter of the law, and God acquit them of their practices. I arrest thee of high treason by the name of Richard, Earl of Cambridge. I arrest thee of high treason by the name of Henry, Lord Scroop of Masham. I arrest thee of high treason by the name Thomas Gray, Knight of Northumberland. Our purposes God justly hath discovered, and I repent my fault more than my death. For me, the gold of France did not seduce, though I do admit it as a motive the rather to effect what I intended. But God be thanked for prevention. Never did faithful subject more rejoice at the discovery of most dangerous treason than I do at this hour. Joy over myself, my fault, but not my body. Pardon, sovereign. God quit you in his mercy. Hear your sentence. You have conspired against our royal person, joined with an enemy proclaimed, and from his coffers received the golden earnest of our death. Touching our person, 
seek we no revenge. But we, our kingdom's safety, must so tender, whose ruin you have sought, that to her laws we do deliver you. Get you therefore hence, poor, miserable wretches, to your death. Now, lords, for France, we doubt not now, but every rub is smoothed on our way. Cheerly, to see the signs of war advance. No king of England, if not king of France! <laughs>